In this video, we're going to be talking about the flux of a vector field over a surface. If we think about three-dimensional space as a fluid and a vector field as the current inside that fluid, then the flux of a vector field over a surface is a measure of how much fluid flows across that surface. Before we start talking about flux, I need to define a few terms. Our first term is the unit normal. Let S be a smooth surface in space. For any point A, B, C on that surface, the unit normal to the surface is a unit vector N that is orthogonal to the tangent plane of S at A, B, C. Note that if S is defined by Z equals F of X, Y, then the tangent plane at a point A, B, C is given by Z equals C plus the partial derivative of F with respect to X evaluated at A, B times X minus A plus the partial derivative of f with respect to y at a, b times y minus b. This can be rewritten as negative fx at a, b times x minus a minus fy at a, b times y minus b plus z minus c equals zero. Now the reason that I might write the equation of the plane like this is because we can easily read off what the normal vector is. Here the coefficients negative fx at a, b, negative fy at a, b, and the coefficient 1 here are components of a vector that's orthogonal to the tangent plane. So to find the unit normal, all we have to do is divide by the magnitude of that vector. So a unit normal vector to the surface is given by n equals negative fx negative fy 1 divided by the length of that vector, which is square root of fx squared plus fy squared plus 1. Note that for a surface, there are two unit normals at any given point A, B, C. One is the vector that we've just written, and the other is the negative of that. To visualize this, consider this surface with the point A, B, C. One of our unit normals points up like this, and the other unit normal points the opposite direction. Both are orthogonal to the tangent plane, and both are unit vectors. Next, we'll talk about orientable surfaces. We say that a surface is orientable or two-sided if it is possible to define a unit normal n at each point x, y, z on the surface and n is a continuous function of x, y, and z. Most of the surfaces that we've looked at so far have been orientable surfaces. These surfaces have two sides, maybe an up and a down or an inside and an outside. An example of something that is not orientable is the Mobius strip. To form the Mobius strip, you take a strip of paper, you twist one of the ends, then glue the ends together. Now let's look at this from the top. So let me pick a unit normal at the top point, say here. As I keep going around, my unit normal points outwards like this. As I work my way down, my unit normals flip over to the other side. Notice that as I approach my original point, the vectors are pointing inwards. However, at my original point, the unit normal points outwards. So there was a jump from pointing inwards to pointing outwards. This means that my function defining the unit normal is not continuous. This example shows that non-orientable surfaces exist, but what we're going to be working with will always be orientable. So if a surface is orientable, what we can do is orient it, meaning I can pick a consistent direction for all of the unit vectors at each point on the surface. We say that a surface is positively oriented if the unit normal vectors all point upwards, meaning the z component of n is all positive. Now, it may not always be possible to pick unit normal vectors that all point upwards. For example, on a sphere, if you try to pick a consistent direction for all of the unit normals, then some will point upwards and some will point downwards. So for closed surfaces like the sphere, we say that it is positively oriented if the unit normal vectors all point outwards. Now, with all of these terms defined, we're ready to talk about the flux of a vector field over a surface. Again, we want to imagine that our three-dimensional space is a fluid, and our vector field indicates the flow of that fluid. 
the flux of a vector field over a surface measures the amount of fluid flowing across that surface. First, let's observe the following. Let V be a vector at a point A, B, C on a surface S. Then V can be decomposed into a vector that goes along S and a vector that goes across S. Let's try to illustrate this. Let's say I have a surface S, like this, and a point A, B, C. And let's say my vector V looks like this. Now if N is the unit normal to the surface at A, B, C, then we can project V onto N. This projection would be the component of V that goes in the direction of N. Now the remaining component of V would look something like that, and that is just a vector that goes along the surface S. If I'm trying to measure the flow across my surface S, I don't care about that orange vector. The orange vector just goes along S. It doesn't pass through S. So the part of V that I'm really interested in is the projection of V onto N. That's what goes across my surface. So if you recall, the projection of V onto N is given by V dot N times N divided by its magnitude. Since n is the unit normal vector, its magnitude is 1, so we don't need this term. So the projection of v onto n is just v dot n times the vector n. Now if I ask the question, how much of v goes across the surface s, all I have to do is take the magnitude of this projection, which is the magnitude of v dot n times n. Well, v dot n is just a scalar, so I can pull that out giving me v dot n times the magnitude of n. And well, again, n is a unit vector, so the magnitude is just 1, leaving me with v dot n. So the amount of v that goes across s is v dot n. We're now ready to define the flux of a vector field over a surface. Let f be a continuous vector field defined on an oriented surface s with unit normal n. The flux of f over s is given by the surface integral of f dot n. So we're integrating f dot n because that measures how much of f goes across the surface s. And when we integrate, we're essentially summing up the flow across every point on s. So how do we calculate the flux of f over s? If s is defined by z equals f of xy over a region r on the xy plane, and s is positively oriented, then we know that the unit normal is of the form negative fx, negative fy, 1, divided by its magnitude, which is square root of fx squared plus fy squared plus 1. So the flux of f over s is the surface integral of f dot n ds, this is the double integral of f dot n, which is negative fx, negative fy, 1, divided by its magnitude, which is square root of fx squared plus fy squared plus 1. ds gets replaced with square root of fx squared plus fy squared plus 1 dA over the region R. This was how we calculated our surface integrals in the previous video. What we notice here is that the square root of fx squared plus fy squared plus 1 cancel out. So to calculate the flux, we just do the double integral of f dot the vector negative fx negative fy 1 dA over the region R. I want to point out that if s is negatively oriented, then the normal vector would point downwards. So we would calculate the flux of f over s by doing the double integral of f dot the vector fx, fy, negative 1, dA over the region r. So now let's look at an example. So in this example, let s be the portion of the plane 3x plus 2y plus z equals 6, in the first octant oriented positively. Let f be the vector field x, y, z, 
and let's calculate the flux of F over S. I'll start with drawing a sketch of the surface S. Our plane 3x plus 2y plus z equals 6 intersects the x-axis at 2, 0, 0. It intersects the y-axis at 0, 3, 0. And it intersects the z-axis at 0, 0, 6. Just like in normal surface integrals, we want to define s in the form z equals some function of x and y. And we also need to figure out the region on the xy plane that my surface is over. Taking the equation of the plane and solving for z, I find that my surface is defined by z equals 6 minus 3x minus 2y. Next, to find the region r that my surface is over, I'm going to take my plane and project it onto the xy plane. So then I need to choose an order of integration for my double integral. So here I can choose dy dx and draw vertical lines through my region. These vertical lines are bounded above by the purple line and bounded below by the x-axis. Now I can find the equation of that purple line by taking the equation of the plane and setting z equal to 0. This gives me 3x plus 2y equals 6. And if I solve for y, I get y equals 6 minus 3x over 2. So for my region r, I know that my y values are bounded above by 6 minus 3x over 2 and bounded below by the x-axis y equals 0. Looking at my region, my x values go from 0 to 2, so those are my bounds for x's. So now we're ready to set up the integral to find the flux of f over s. So the flux is the surface integral of f dot n ds, and we found that we can calculate this by doing the double integral of f dot negative fx negative fy 1 dA over the region R. In this problem, f is 6 minus 3x minus 2y. So my double integral looks like the double integral of f, which is x, y, z, dotted with negative fx, so that's 3, negative fy would be 2, and 1 dA over the region R. So this dot product gives me 3x plus 2y plus z dA over the region R. To integrate this, I would need to replace the z with 6 minus 3x minus 2y. So I have the double integral of 3x plus 2y plus 6 minus 3x minus 2y dy dx, where my y's go from 0 to 6 minus 3x over 2, and my x's go from 0 to 2. So we have the integral from 0 to 2, integral from 0 to 6 minus 3x over 2, of just 6 dy dx. I won't go through the details of this calculation, but you should end up with 18. So that's it for this video. In our next video, we'll look at the divergence theorem, which allows us to calculate the flux of a vector field over a closed surface easily.